The NRL finds itself embroiled in yet another racism controversy following a disturbing incident involving Roosters' Spencer Lenu and Brisbane Broncos' Ezra Mann. During their recent match at Allegiant Stadium in Las Vegas, Lenu allegedly directed a racial slur towards Mam, branding him a monkey. Shalom, most high in Christ blessed. My name is Officer Yuri of Israel United in Christ. Today what we're going to talk about is how even in the sports world, even as millionaires, you are not exempt from the curses of Deuteronomy chapter 28. The Israelites that were scattered all over the earth, they will be identified by the curses that they're under. Spencer Lanou's monkey slur shines a light on systemic racism in Australia, says NRL Indigenous Player Education Manager. A monkey or an ape has a long history of being associated with black people all around the world, Coombs told the ABC. It's been used for that very purpose, to dehumanize black people, to say that they are closer to monkeys and apes than they are to being human. I can't really think of any parallel for white people. This is something that's been happening in the sports world, especially for a very, very, very long time. You have famous soccer players being booed out of stadiums, being called monkey, having bananas thrown at them. Crowds were heard shouting, monkey chants across the stadium. How come with all the money that footballers, soccer players, and athletes have, they can't escape the plight of their people? So what is it showing you? Money doesn't matter. The curses of God are going to follow us until we repent. What curse am I talking about? Let's find out. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 15. But it shall come to pass if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. The children of Israel, we broke God's commandments. Thus we were scattered abroad all throughout the four corners of the earth. But let's see what will happen when we get to these places, past, present, and future. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 37. And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among all nations, whither the Lord shall lead thee. That word byword, what is that? What does that mean? Let's get the definition. A word or expression summarizing a thing's characteristics or a person's principle, slogan, motto, nickname, so on and so forth. What is a byword in the Bible? A word or speech and hence object of talk. Is it going to be good talk? Is it going to be good nicknames? No, they're going to call us outside of our God given name. Psalm chapter 44, verse 12. Thou sellest thy people for naught and doest not increase thy wealth by their price. Australia has a dark history of black burden, where First Islanders, Aboriginals, were sold into black bird slavery. The Bible says that when the Lord did that, he didn't make any money off of that. That was a judgment and a punishment on God's chosen people. Verse 13, thou makest us a reproach to our neighbors, a scorn and a derision to them that are round about us, a scorn and a derision insults hurled at us, racial slurs hurled at us. By who? Those nations that are round about us, that are not the children of Israel. Verse 14, thou makest us a byword among the heathen, a shaking of the head among the people. So all the other races have nicknames for you so-called black people. No matter your status, no matter what your bank account says, they have a racial epithet for you. They have some type of proverb for you, some type of old saying, you black people are never on time. Black people run fast and they jump high. That's how he's an athlete. They're closely related to monkeys. When fans in the stands start taunting the team with monkey noises. That's a byword, a derision, a scorn that the heathen that the other nations say about us. 
It's meant to dehumanize. It's meant to mess with your psyche. It's meant to lower your position in society to nothing more than an animal. Psalm chapter 137, verse three. For there, they that carried us away captive required of us a song, and they that wasted us required of us mirth, saying, sing us one of the songs of Zion. What this is saying is that in the land that you live, those that have oppressed you, those that have taken some of us captive, they require from us entertainment. They require for us to run on the field, to kick a ball, to put a ball through a hoop, make us laugh, make us cheer. But what we're really showing you is that it's a form of slavery. Sports has always been used to keep the oppressed, to keep the children of Israel asleep. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 15, verse 12. But they counted our life a pastime, and our time here a market for gain. Do you realize that most times the so-called black man is excelled in society? It's due to some form of entertainment. It's due to some form of gain. There's a market for gain through his body. He has to run up and down the field. He has to sing a song. He has to make us laugh. There's a market for gain. Your life is a pastime or a novelty or something to do for those that hate you, for those that oppress you. Let's read on. For say they, we must be getting every way, though it be by evil means. Usually there's some type of wickedness behind it. The whole sports world was started in the Greek captivity with discus and gymnos, which means naked place of exercise. That's why this locker room banter spilled out into the field as to where you so-called black man are in a low state, you are in a low position. You are following the customs of those that do not love you. Romans chapter 12 and verse two. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. We must renew our minds out of sports, out of the Greek fashions, out of the ways of this world, and back to the customs of the Bible back to the customs of your people. You are not a monkey. You are the children of Israel. You're not a slave. You're not just a number with a name on the back. You're not just a Jersey. You're one of the greatest people on the face of this earth, but we've been brought low because we broke God's commandments. If you have any more questions, you can follow us on all platforms. IUIC Oceana on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. We also have an IUIC Oceana WhatsApp. If you like the information you heard, you want to learn more about your history and your heritage inside of the Bible, send us your WhatsApp number and we will add you to our IUIC Oceana chat. All right? Most High in Christ bless. Shalom.